Well, welcome. In this video, as you can see, we're going to be talking about complex numbers. But before we get into what a complex number is all about, we first need to talk about this letter I that's over here on the left. Now, the letter I is representing the square root of negative 1. We call letter I our imaginary number. And we need to use this in certain situations where we're trying to find the square root of a negative number. Because if we try to find the square root of a negative number, like over here on the far left where we have the square root of negative 4, there is no real number that I could get as my solution. So we have to use I, which is a non-real number, to be able to uh, have a workaround to be able to simplify a problem like that. Well, another important thing to understand is if I is the square root of negative 1, that means that I squared would be negative 1. Because if you multiplied square root of negative 1 times the square root of negative 1, you would get um, negative 1 as your answer. Um, so I squared, again, would be negative 1. That's important to make sure you remember that fact. We're going to be using that fact a lot in these videos. In fact, in this lesson, we're going to break this video into, or this lesson up into a number of videos. So then that way, um, if you need to go back and watch any of these individual parts, you can do that a lot easier. So in this first video, we're going to be learning about how to simplify some roots. We're going to look at how to solve an equation with the quadratic formula um, in imaginary numbers. Then we'll have another video that will have, um, that'll show you how to do some basic operations with imaginary numbers. And finally, a third video, how to divide by what we call a complex number. So, uh, but let's look at this situation here. We have in this example 1a where it says to show that a square root of negative 5 is i square root of 5. Well, you might think that sounds kind of weird how that's phrased, but let's put it to you. Let me explain a little bit more easier. Let's say if I wanted you to show that um, for 81 that the square root of 81 would be 9. Well, the way that we would show that is we could say, well, 9 times 9 is 81, so 9 would be a square root of 81. So for this example, if I want to show that a square root of negative 5 is i squared of 5, the first thing I'm going to say is, well, i squared of 5 times i squared of 5, let's simplify that. Well, i squared of 5 times i squared of 5. i times i would end up being i squared, and square root of 5 times square root of 5 is square root of 25. And I can simplify this even further because we know that i squared is negative 1, and we know that the square root of 25 would be 5. And negative 1 times 5 would give us our final answer now of negative 5. So I've just shown that a square root of negative 5 would be i squared of 5 because i squared of negative, or i squared of 5 times i squared of 5 is negative 5. Well, we're going to look at some other examples now of how we can use this imaginary number i and how to simplify some different situations. So we're going to look at this next example. We're going to show how the square root of negative 4 times square root of negative 16 is different from the square root of negative 4 times square root of negative 16. So let's watch those. Let's see how we can simplify those two examples, and let's look at some others as well. OK, so this first example, it says negative 4 times the square root of negative 16. And like I said, we cannot simplify the square root of negative 4 and get a real number as our answer. So what we have to do is we have to use this idea of our imaginary i being the square root of negative 1 because negative 4 is the same as negative 1 times 4. So I could break that up into i times the square root of 4. So the way that we need to look at that is we could, if we have the square root of a negative number, we can factor an i out, leaving us with the square root of 4. Do the same thing with the 16. So we're going to factor an i out. So we have i times the square root of 16. And now the square root of 4 is 2, so this would be 2i. Square root of 16 is 4, so that's going to be 4i, which gives us 8i squared, which is negative 8. Now, in this other example, the square root is a grouping symbol. So with our order of operations, our first step is to always simplify within the grouping symbols first. So I have to take negative 4 times negative 16 before I can do anything else. So that ends up giving me a square root of 64. And the square root of 64 is just a positive 8. So these result in two different answers, a negative 8 and a positive 8. Now, this whole lesson is all about complex numbers. Let's define what a complex number is. A complex number is basically just in the form a plus bi, where a is always going to be a real number, and the bi, that portion, is your non-real portion of the, of the expression. 
And in order for us to be able to solve these equations that we're going to look at next, to be able to get a complex number as our answer, we're going to have to use the quadratic formula, which is over here on the right. So you want to make sure that you uh, know the quadratic formula. If you don't, make sure you get that in your notes. But remember, it's the opposite of b is how I want you to remember that. The opposite of b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac, all of which is divided over 2a. So now in this equation, x squared minus 2x plus 7, I notice it's equal to 0. Before I can use the quadratic formula, that is the first thing to always look for, is is it equal to 0? If it's equal to 0, then you can start. If it's not equal to 0, we want to get it to equal to 0 first. So for this one, my value for a would be 1, my value for b is a negative 2, and my value for c is 7. So I'm going to plug these numbers into that quadratic formula. So it's going to be x equals the opposite of b, so the opposite of negative 2 is a positive 2, plus or minus the square root of b squared. Now negative 2, I want you to just go ahead and square that. Don't write it as negative 2 squared, otherwise... If you type it in your calculator, you might mess up and forget to put the negative 2 in parentheses. So for a lot of these times, you can just take and square the negative 2 and get positive 4. And then it's minus 4 times a, which is 1, times c, which is 7. And it's everything, not just the root, it's everything divided by 2 times a. a, again, is, is 1, so 2 times 1 is just 2. Now next, we're going to simplify under the radical. So when I simplify under the radical, do not take 4 minus 4 and get 0. We have to do multiplying first. 4 times 1, I'll ignore the minus for right now. 4 times 1 is 4, times 7 is 28. So we have 4 minus 28, which is negative 24. Now, I'm going to cheat because we can't take the square root of, of negative 24. I'm going to factor out that negative, or factor out an i, and make that negative 24 positive 24. So now I have 2 plus or minus the square root of 24 times, or all divided by 2. Now there's a couple ways we could simplify this root. If you remember your perfect squares, and remember that 24 is the same as 4 times 6, 4 is a perfect square. So this simplifies to be 2 plus or minus the square root of 4, which is 2, so we'd have 2i. The square root of 6, there's no perfect squares that we can get from that, so it's just 6 all divided by 2. Now, maybe you don't know your perfect squares that well. So another way that you could get and simplify the square root of 24 is to look at the prime factorization of 24. So you could start this out any number of ways. Maybe you recognize that 3 times 8 is 24. 3 is a prime number, so I circle my prime numbers, and you'll see why in a minute. 8 is 2 times 4, so I'm going to circle 2. That's, my, that's a prime number. 4 is not a prime number, so I have to simplify that and get 2 times 2. Now, this is a square root, so for every 2 of the same number, I get to factor 1 out. So I have a pair of 2's, so I factor out a 2, so I have 2i. And 3 times 2, I can't, I don't have anything to pair up with those, so those stay the same. 3 times 2 is 6, stays under the radical. So that's one way that you could use prime factorization to get the same uh, simplified form. Now, we don't want to leave our answer like this. We want to write our answer as a complex number in the form a plus bi. So to do that, we're going to break this up into two pieces. 2 divided by 2, plus or minus 2i squared of 6, all divided by 2. And now we want to see if this can be reduced. Sure enough, it can. 2 divided by 2 is 1, so we have 1 plus or minus. And these 2's cancel each other out, leaving us with 1i, or just i squared of 6. That would be your answer. We actually call those complex conjugates, but we're going to get to that here in a little bit. So let's... Uh, why don't I have you guys do this one on your own, but I'm going to help you get started. Because if you notice, this one is not equal to 0. So we want to first start by getting it equal to 0. I would do that by subtracting 5z from both sides. So I would have 3z squared minus 5z, to put this in standard form, plus 10 equals 0 now. So now we can identify our values for a, b, and c. a is a positive 3, b is a negative 5, and c is a positive 10. So I want you guys to take it from here. Plug these numbers now into your quadratic formula. Simplify that. I'm going to give you guys a hint, though. When you go to get the piece under the root, the only thing that you're going to do is be able to factor out an i. Nothing else can be simplified underneath the root in this problem. But go ahead and um, take and uh, solve this on your own. And we'll pause the video and hit play when you're ready to check your answer. 
Okay, you should have gotten what's in green here, the 5, 6, plus or minus i squared to 95 divided by 6. To get that, you plug these numbers into your quadratic formula. And when you simplify that, you should have gotten negative 95 under the root. So you should have 5 plus or minus the square root of negative 95 divided by 6. And then the square root of 95, like I said, that actually can't be re simplified. But we can. We have to take out an, uh, an i. We can never leave a square root of a negative number alone. You have to simplify that by factoring out an i. And then we want to break this up into two pieces to see if it can be reduced. Now, clearly you can see that this one's not going to be reduced, uh, but otherwise it's a good idea to break it up and to have it in a, as a complex number. So 5, 6 would be your real number portion, plus or minus i squared to 95 over 6 would be your non-real portion. Now, this idea of complex conjugates we're going to be using um, in a little bit, but just know that a complex conjugate is what we got for example, in the first example there, the 1 plus i squared to 6, 1 plus or minus i squared to 6. You could break that up into two pieces as 1 plus i squared to 6 and 1 minus i squared to 6. And those are what we call complex conjugates. And we're going to see in the third video for this lesson how complex conjugates can be used when we're dividing fractions, when we're dividing two complex numbers. So we're going to end this video here. And in the next video, you're going to see how to do some basic operations with complex numbers. And in the next video, in the third and final video, we'll see how to divide by complex numbers. So good luck now as you go to that next video.